So we're at the hut. Well, I'm at the hut. It's been a long time since I've shown you the hut. Now I know I'm meant to be doing a brand, uh, brain tanning series and I am working on that. Uh, it's just taking a little while, but I will get that up soon. For now, we're at the hut. I'll show you a look around and yeah, there's been quite some, you know, a fair bit of change since last time uh, I've done a video uh, at this location. So. so this part here was a, like a little veranda type of deal that we had here. Um, it was good, but it didn't leave us with much room to operate in. So what I did is I've enclosed that, okay? All, all enclosed now, so it basically becomes an extension, an enclosed extension of the hut, and that's where the fireplace is. So all this timber part here, this is all reclaimed timber that I've managed to scavenge, you know, from various places, okay? Uh, I haven't really spent much money on this and that was the whole intent is not to spend much money at all on this uh, project. Uh, the door, this is uh, from timber that I milled up years and years ago and yeah it comes out really good. A nice feature of the hut is this rustic um, heavy hardwood door which is really good. The windows you can see I've got one brown one and one white one. Once again, you know, scavenged materials. The white one is actually a bathroom window. It's got the frosted glass in it. It's not ideal and the colour sort of stands out, but what the heck, it was free, so why not? We can change that later on if we really need to, but we might even just give it a bit of a paint for it to blend in a bit. Same with the second window, just an old one that uh, got donated to me. Actually, so down here, this is going to be the veranda, okay? Now I scavenged all this flooring uh, from on the property actually, had it stored there and with the intentions of using this flooring as the floor for the veranda. Now, it's taken us a long time to get the actual veranda sorted and we still haven't yet, we haven't got the roof on at all. got one pole in, which I'll show you in a minute, for the veranda. However, this flooring hasn't really stood up very well, so I'll look at replacing, get rid of all of that. Maybe just, uh, maybe just build up with sand <coughs> for now, um, underneath the veranda, or even maybe later on getting some brick as pavers for underneath the veranda. I'm going to be setting up a blacksmithing little setup here. So I do double in a bit of blacksmithing and that'll give me a chance to make up, you know, door handles and latches and hooks and stuff like that for around, around camp and in the hut to hang lanterns and stuff like that. So one of the first jobs once I got that up and running is to do some uh, proper door handles. At the moment I'm just using some old rustic hooks that I've found. That just does the job, just gives us something to hang on to. So this is my bed set up, it's just an old army stretcher, one of those old spring ones, but you know, alright, it does a job and it fits the sort of hut really well, not being too modern, I'm trying to get away from a lot of modern stuff when I come here, you know, um, with, you know, within reason. However, yeah, the bedding arrangements, I think I'll just keep it as stretches. I like to be able to pack them up and move them out of the way if I need to. So you've got to remember, I still haven't got a lot of room in here. So if we have permanent beds set up, I think that it may impede a lot of, a lot of room and a lot of functionality of the hut, okay? So I think I'll just stick with the, the stretcher setups. I think it's just easy and, and, they're, and they're comfortable, so. Uh, yeah, I've got the traditional swag with some gear and then my, uh, I've got the 22 rifle with me on this trip and a little bit of reed material as well for night time. So what we have here is an old fridge, an old thing. And anyway, we've got a resident rat 
thing that's moved in underneath the floor here, so I'm going to have to set up maybe like a deadfall trap or something and try and get him. Anyway, I've got some food items in here and bits and pieces that stay in here permanently. That way I know that <clears throat> I've always got sort of something um, here to, you know, cook with and clean and whatever. So, yeah, some permanent stuff in there. Does really well. Um, it's just protecting stuff. The handle's broken off it, so I might just have to jerry something up to just keep that closed so old mate rat doesn't get in there. Now, one of the projects I do want to do coming up soon, once I get the veranda done, I want to make up a what's called a Coolgardi safe. I need to take um, wet hessian and the, the breeze that passes over it cools the meat safe. So that'll go out on the veranda as well for summertime. Hope you can see this all right, the light's doing weird, weird stuff. But anyway, this is a little table. It's not permanent or anything. I've just literally laid some boards on top of an old Singer sewing machine table. Uh, yeah, I don't even know where that originally came from. It was here on the property. So I just utilize it in the hut. But yeah, use our little table at the moment. I've got a kerosene little stove. My billy and lanterns and stuff like that. Another lantern up here. I'll show you. But yeah, this is where you know prepare food and whatever, you know, it's the table. Okay, so we've got a wood burning stove, well, sorry, not a stove, a heater in here. This I picked up uh, for free from a family member, just had to do some chainsaw work for it. And yeah, it is really good to have in here. <laughs> Heats the whole hut up really nicely and provides a nice atmosphere of the, you know, the flame and the light flickering at night time, as well as the kerosene lanterns and stuff like that. It's really homely feel at night time in here when you got all that going, so yeah. I would like to one day do a, a full fireplace in here, and I still might one day, but I don't know, the, the benefits of having this, I think may outweigh an open fireplace just for controlling heat and, and fuels and stuff like that. I don't know, verdict out yet. Also the floor now is paved with old bricks. Okay, once again, scavenged, uh, reused bricks. And yeah, it makes a really good addition to the floor and to the hut. Gives it that really, I don't know, classic sort of look and rustic look. Rather than just having a dirt floor, decided yeah, to lay these down. Really good. So nothing, you know, in the hut is is straight or level, but that's the beauty of it. Okay, I think we can get too wrapped up these days with everything being perfect. It's not the whole. That's not the idea of the hut. Okay, we can keep it rustic. You know, if things aren't level, they aren't level. Well, that's my excuse anyway, and I'm sticking to it. So one thing I did forget to mention is the outside fire, it's a keyhole fire. So the idea is that I can have my main fire here for warmth and whatever and for creating coals for cooking and I can scrape those coals forward into this area here and put my cooking utensils or pots or whatever I'm using over the hot coals. That way that fire can still keep doing its thing and keep providing me hot coals to cook on in this front part. Predominantly still use this fire, the outside fire, okay. The inside fire is purely just for for warmth at night time if need be. However, I try to use this as much as I can out here, okay. If the weather turns crap, I can at least go in there and have an inside fire to cook on and whatnot. However, majority of the time is spent here. Right. You have to bear with me, I'm a little bit of a cough. Past three weeks I haven't been able to shake it. So yeah, I apologize if I'm coughing and whatever, but whatever. Lighter. Oh, what's the world coming to?
gonna chill out here, have me cuppa, a little something to eat, and that's about it. So yeah, it's got the lanterns burning nicely. Alright, so it's the next morning now, got down to about 5 degrees last night, wasn't too bad in here, quite warm and comfy, fire ticked away nicely, just nice and slowly all night, which was good. It's got the billy on now, yeah, have a morning brew, and then uh, yeah, see what the, the day brings. Right, so I thought I'd just do a little bit of cooking. I feel like something to go with my cup of tea. Yeah, and yeah, so I thought I'd do up a batch of Anzac biscuits. Okay, so for those of you who don't know what Anzac biscuits are, maybe from overseas or something, it's basically a biscuit that was made for our troops. You get sent Anzac biscuits if you're overseas, if you're lucky enough. Uh, though, the reason why they preferred this biscuit was because it lasted. Okay, you got to remember, you know, World War One, particularly. It took a long time for things to get anywhere. Okay, it was all by ship, so it's going to take months for these biscuits to actually arrive in country and then delivered out to the troops. Okay, so they need to last, and these Anzac biscuits do last. Okay, basically because it's full of sugar. Okay, and depending on how you like your Anzac biscuits, not a lot of moisture. Some, you know, like them hard and crunchy, and then you can do ones up that are a bit more softer, with a bit more moisture in them. So what we need, basically, is a cup of, well, some rolled oats. We'll go into the measurement soon. Some plain flour, some coconut, butter, Golden syrup, or Cocky's Joy, and bicarb soda. I don't have bicarb soda, but I do have baking powder. We'll see how that goes. Yeah, but anyway, that's basically about it. I'll mix up a batch, I'll show you what we're looking for, and then we'll put it on the fire outside. Now, I don't have a measuring cup. I don't generally measure stuff too often, but I'm going to use this pannikin, okay? So that'll do for our measuring cup. So we'll put in some, just some plain flour. This is all just stuff that I've had at the hut. We'll go about, it's quite big. So equal parts. So flour. Cup of rolled oats, to half a cup of coconut. Look at that. Got a little bit of sugar here. I've got brown sugar. They say white sugar most of the recipes, but anyway, I'll just use what we've got. I'm gonna go. Oh, it says one cup, but. I don't know, I'm gonna go like half a cup, not even. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of sugar. So that's our dry ingredients. I'm just gonna mix that sort of all in together. So I just got a billy can here, I'm gonna cut my butter up. And, I don't know about there somewhere. Slice that up a bit more, because then we're going to put this on a low heat, just to melt it. Hopefully not burn it. I think from memory, I think it calls for about 125 grams of butter. But 
as I said, I don't really measure, I just do it. Okay, so just outside now, it's got, it's just scraped a little bit of hot coals over into this area of our fire pit. Let's put our billy on there and just slowly mount that butter. Alright, we've got our butter nicely melted. Just gonna put our wet ingredients in now. I don't know if that's too much butter or not, but we'll find out. <laughs> Uh, two tablespoons of golden syrup. One tablespoon of water. It calls for half a teaspoon of bicarb soda, but I don't have bicarb of baking powder, so we'll see if it makes any difference or not. So now it's just a matter of mixing it all up with your hands, getting in there. I reckon maybe just a smidge more water, not much. So that's our ingredients mixed up. Now it's not overly wet. You see it's just all falls apart. But we want it to be able to hold together though once we start creating our biscuits, okay? So we form them and then they should hold together like that. Okay, that's what we're looking for. So now we've we've mixed up and we've got our consistency right. It's time to bake them. Right, so there's our first little batch. Still got a lot more mixture left over, so we'll just go for that for now. Now, they generally don't take too long. So there's a preheated oven. All I'm gonna do is just put a little bit on top. Try and get a nice sort of even spread of coals, but remember they're only thin little biscuits, so. They're not going to take too much. So that'll be our test batch to see how they, they go. While I'm waiting I can just make up some more while we wait. Been probably 15 minutes, they're only small biscuits so... Oh. That. That's what we're after. So now we'll just set them aside, they've got to cool and harden up a bit. Hurry up. Let them set. Keep the heat in our pot. And get a few more on the go. So if you're wondering what camp oven I'm using, this is a hillbilly camp oven made in Emerald, Victoria. Not a bad camp oven setup. I like the versatility of it. You know, you got the frying pan, you can hang it, you know, via these 
you know different ways and all this sort of stuff it's it's pretty cool it's spun steel so it's not cast but still it holds the heat really well not as much as cast iron however it's a bit lighter as well so if you're concerned about you know weight and whatnot maybe an option for you you're not going to carry this thing you know around you know backpacking or whatever it's vehicle based type type of deal but you know and it's a yeah as i said before it's a really multi-use item okay so something to consider it's all aussie made which is fantastic which is what i like That's it, Anzac biscuits done in the camp oven on the fire. At the hut in Australia. Doesn't get much better than that, does it? Ingredients, I'll put in the description what they were so you can look at that. Chug them in your vehicle. Next time you're at camp, you might want to make up a batch of Anzac biscuits. So yeah, right, we're gonna enjoy this and this and chill out for a bit. <laughs>